is Janet Diane Morius Wordlow for Expansions.com as we are moving into our second full week of April. And as you know from last week's podcast, Stuart is traveling, so it's all up to me. So it probably won't be quite as exciting, but I do have some very interesting news for you. For starters, you might have heard about the Panama Papers by now, hopefully, which has to do with a year-long investigation by global journalists who ha which has revealed a rich or excuse me, a network of rich and powerful world leaders who use offshore tax havens to hide their vast wealth, launder money, dodge sanctions, and evade taxes, despite legal requirements in place that should prevent exactly those things from occurring. Now the interesting thing to me, and I've been following this on and off, is that they really never say who those global journalists are. And it seems to me that if these people are breaking such a huge story that they would want their names out there for recognition. But So, who's doing this behind the scenes? That remains to be seen. Anyway, um, if you, you may have heard by now that it is called the Panama Papers and it includes 11 million encrypted internal documents. That's 2.6 terabytes worth of information from the Panamanian law firm Mossack Fonseca. Anyway, it has to do with offshore holdings from 128 politicians and public officials from around the globe, including 12 current and former world leaders. Now, this includes Russian President, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and the interesting thing is you may know by now that the Prime Minister of, Israel, or of Iceland actually resigned over this issue. And now we have a new Prime Minister, minister taking hold on Thursday. So we're going to see what happens with that. Now the old Prime Minister, it says, will still remain head of the Progressive Party, which will uh, might not go down well with the throngs of Icelanders who have taken to the streets to protest, and they want nothing to do with him. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in Iceland, because Iceland seems to be a leader when it comes to doing things with the uh, economic and monetary system, and the world is always watching them on that issue. So, moving along to, of course, presidential potential Donald Trump. Recently, there was a teen, and this always amazes me, um, that this teen asked these kind of questions, because I believe they're all set up one way or the other. And she asked Trump about his stance on women's rights and their rights to choose their own reproductive health. So Trump said, quote, okay, well, look, I mean, as you know, I'm pro-life, right? I think you know that, and I, with exceptions, with the three exceptions, but pretty much that's my stance. Is that okay? You understand. So then this teen followed up by asking Trump, quote, do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Now, I've not heard that even talked about before, so I thought that was interesting that brought, that, that came up. And Trump said, quote, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. And the teen says, for the woman. And Trump answered, quote, yes, there has to be some form. And then later on, he said that he thinks the laws should remain as they are. And, quote, at this moment, the laws are set. I think we have to leave it that way. The laws are set now on abortion, and that's the way they're going to remain until they're changed. So a lot of double talking. I thought this was a very strange interchange, but see what happens. Now speaking of Donald Trump, this was another interesting story about a Halloween mask factory in Mexico in the central state of Morelos. Apparently there is a mask making company down there who has been generating these full head masks of Donald Trump. In fact they said that last month they sold 10,000 of them. And it's like, who is buying these kind of things? It said that they sell for $23 in the United States if it has hair. That's a deluxe model. And without, or with, I guess, standard latex, without the additional hair, it's basically $19.95. So who's buying these masks? And, of course, as you know, masks in the Illuminati, um, or I'll say the elite, they often figure prominently in their rituals. In fact, a lot of times you'll see them arriving to Halloween parties and places like that where they have on these full head masks, especially animal head masks. So keep your eyes open because I think that's just really odd, especially 10,000 masks. Who's going to wear that? I think that might have something to do with what Stuart and I have been talking about, about the possibility of an upcoming civil war, and perhaps he will be part of that um, firestorm when it happens. 
And speaking of the upcoming Civil War, I have a feeling now what it might actually be about, because I do believe that we are heading that way. You might have heard by now about Mississippi, and they are claiming that Mississippi has taken a bold step to defend religious liberty. In fact, the governor, Bryant, signed into law something called the Religious Freedom Law that, quote, will protect sincerely held religious beliefs and moral convictions of individuals, organizations, and private associations from discriminatory action by state government or its political subdivisions, which would include counties, cities, and institutes, institutions of higher learning. Now, in other words, what does this mean? That according to this article, every Christian who owns a business in the state of Mississippi owes the governor a thank you. This bill reinforces the rights which currently exist to exercise the religious freedom as stated in the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Family Research Council President Tony Perkins praised the governor for standing up to the fundamental freedoms of the people that they represent. Perkins goes on to say that no person should be punished by the government with crippling fines or face disqualification for simply believing what President Obama believed just a few years ago, that marriage is the union of a man and a woman. Unquote. And then the article goes on to say, before the Supreme Court decided to redefine marriage, President Obama assured the nation that those who opposed same-sex marriage had nothing to fear and promised us that gay marriage would have no impact on our lives or our religion. However, now this is interesting, the militant, they notice I say militant, LGBT activists and their supporters have waged a war on Christian business owners from coast to coast. So now sexual orientation is becoming a matter of religion, specifically Christian. And this is what's happening in the South. It says that the, the militant LGBT activists have gone after grandmothers such as Baronel Stutzman, the owner of a Washington State flower shop, who declined to participate in a gay wedding. They've tried to silence and intimidate the owners of bakeries in Indiana, Colorado, and Oregon. And recently, this mob has gone after the owners of the Timber Creek Bed and Breakfast in Paxton, Illinois. Apparently, the owners of this bed and breakfast were fined $80,000 because they refused to hold a civil union ceremony for two homosexual men. And now, quote, according to the article, thanks to the Governor Bryant, Christian business owners will be free from such bullying and intimidation, and the governor should be commended for his courage and he, because he signed the legislation under the threat of an economic boycott. Now, I want to continue on with a few other related articles before we actually go back and discuss what's happening. But I want you to keep this in mind that now we have a platform, just like we had blacks against whites, now they're developing this platform of those people who basically support people who have the right to choose their own gender or make gender reassignments or whatever it is that they feel led to do versus Christians. So again, reminders of the crusade, of the crusade in my opinion. Restaurants, it says, will respond to Mississippi's new anti-LGBT law by hanging out signs that says, everyone's welcome. Apparently, the Mississippi Hospitality and Restaurant Association is printing up signs that anybody can now get that says, everyone's welcome here, because they don't like the brand of what's happening to their industry based on this law that the governor has signed. Now, personally, if somebody has an issue with me, I don't know why you would want to do business with them anyway. And, you know, there are people who don't like me for what I'm talking about. But, again, then let me go somewhere else. Let's not try to force everybody. And this is why I say this is militant, because it's just like the Muslims. And people who are, have um, Islam as their religion, it doesn't mean that they're all bad, quote, unquote. It just means that people have different ways of expressing themselves. And anytime anything gets militant, then we have these kind of fights. That's what they're trying to do is stir up the inner angers within people between the Trump and all these kind of religious things that are going on. And in my opinion, people should just let other people be who that they are. And then it gets even deeper than that. Because, now let's go back to North Carolina. It says, Oscar-winning composer Stephen Schwartz announced that he will ban North Carolina theaters or any other organizations from performing his works. 
His decision comes after the state banned transgender people from using the bathrooms of their choice, and he is best known for creating the Broadway show Wicked. So now people are starting to use their economic leverage against that. Now you might remember that North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory signed a bill that banned people from using bathrooms not assigned to their birth sex. And when that happened, then PayPal also joined in and they became enraged and retaliated. They had plans to open a new operations center in Charlotte, which would have employed 400 new workers. But now they're saying, quote, the new law perpetuates discrimination and it violates the values and principles that are at the core of PayPal's mission and culture. So they're pulling out. Now, it goes on to say this and to this. This is from a North Carolina representative, Robert Pittinger. He says, PayPal does do business in 25 countries where homosexual behavior is illegal, including five where the penalty is death, yet they object to the North Carolina legislature overturning a misguided ordinance about letting men into the women's bathroom. Now, this bathroom bill has gone really wild in my opinion. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago in one of the podcasts when there was a man who was in um, a YMC, I b believe it was, um, bathroom in Seattle. And there were children in there changing and he said he had the right to be there, but he did not identify himself as transgender. He just said he had the right to be there. He could use any bathroom he wanted, which of course was upsetting the parents. So like I said, this bathroom issue is just kind of going on and on and on. North Carolina says nobody has ever said that it's the transgender community that's going to be causing those problems. Other bad actors will, and I will refer you to this situation, which I did report on in Seattle. However, in Georgia, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Indiana, religious liberty bills have come under attack from a number of Fortune 500 companies, including Coca-Cola, Delta Airlines, UPS, and Marriott Hotels. Now, what's interesting is the American Family Association says that these companies who are attacking the laws in the U.S. are operating in countries where gays are facing fines and imprisonment. It says, the hypocrisy of the major corporations that threatened a boycott in Georgia or other states in response to religious freedom restoration acts is astounding. Many of these same corporations are doing business in Saudi Arabia, a country in which homosexuals are fined, jailed, or killed for their lifestyle. Yet where is the action there? The sad truth is that many Fortune 500 companies turn a blind eye to the horrors inflicted on the LGBT community in Middle Eastern countries. And then we have celebrities who are also vacationing in exotic places like the United Arab Emirates and where gay, being gay can be a death sentence. In fact, Ellen DeGeneres, who recently was rebuking Mississippi for protecting the rights of religious people, was seen vacationing in Dubai. And there it says gays can be thrown in jail for simply sharing a public kiss. So if she's so concerned about human rights, why would she spend her money in a nation that would commit such atrocities? Then Georgia lawmakers passed a bill that would protect pastors from performing same-sex weddings. Disney then threatened to boycott the state and take their business elsewhere. However, they also performed Beauty and the Beast in Dubai, which again, they can put gays in jails for simply sharing a public kiss. So anyway, a lot of economic things are happening right now and a lot of controversy to get you all stirred up because most people have somebody that they know, they love, they care about, who belongs to the LGBT community. So let's start dividing us against one another. And you may also have heard about Bruce uh, Springsteen. He also canceled his North Carolina concert uh, that was due to be scheduled April 10 well, because of their controversial bathroom law. And then he apologized, but he said the money would be refunded. So again, all of this is about Christianizing this issue and dividing the country. So keep your eye on what's going on because North Carolina, South Carolina, we have this um, LGBT issue going on. We have the Christian thing going on. So they're dividing the people and they're now dividing the states through their legislation. And speaking of the transgender community, there is now a former banker, 55, who was born a man and is now a woman called Eva Tiamat Medusa, 55 years old. 
has had her ears and nose removed to transform herself into a dragon lady with scales, a forked tongue, and a horned skull. Now again, I want to say to you who's the doctor that's performing these things because I think this is totally bizarro and wrong. She has had horns implanted on her forehead, tattoos, scarification on her face, and chests that resemble reptilian scales. She says on her website that, quote, I am the dragon lady, a pre-op M2F, which means male to female, transgender, in the process of morphing into a human dragon, becoming a reptoid as I shed my human skin and my physical appearance and my life as a whole, leaving my humanness behind. Now, I told you this. People were going to start turning into animals. Here you go. You have it happening. She said she wants to embrace, quote, her most natural self-awareness as a mythical beast. And she claims to be the first and only person to have both ears cosmetically removed as part of her ongoing quest to become a dragon. Now, I don't know about that because I don't know um, if you remember that, again, I reported a few weeks ago about a man who had his ears removed so he would look more like his pet parrot. So, anyway, I think, again, so much of this is bizarre. It's all programming. Please don't participate in any of this stuff. When you ignore it, when you don't put energy in, it dies. If you allow it to make you angry, if you allow it to make you get upset, it feeds it and it grows and it grows and it grows. And that is what they are betting on happening and that's how they are baiting you to walk into their trap. So I will tell you right now, just don't go there. And then we move on to climate change, of course, which used to be called global warming until they read our site, I think. Anyway, it says climate change can be expected to boost the number of annual premature U.S. deaths from heat waves in coming decades and to increase mental health problems from extreme weather like hurricanes and floods. Quote from the Surgeon General, I don't know that we've seen something like this before where we have a force that has such a multitude of effects. That's, there's not one single source that we can target with climate change. There are multiple paths that we have to address. Heat waves were estimated to cause 670 to 13,000 U.S. Death, deaths annually in recent years. 670. 6 plus 7 is a 13, and 13,000. There's your number 13 again. Okay, the rise outpaced projected decreases in deaths from extreme cold. The report said poor air quality will likely lead to hundreds of thousands of premature deaths, hospital visits, and acute respiratory illness each year by 2030. They said it also threatens mental health. Post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, general anxiety can all result in places that suffer extreme weather linked to climate change such as hurricanes and floods. So here we go. And then, interestingly enough, someone sent this to me, that the Grand National 2016 winner was named Rule the World. And the win was 33 to 1. So here we have, again, interesting numbers. 33, which is an Illuminati ritual number, and a 1, which is a new beginning. This one also had me interested when I saw it. This was about an ex-U.S. Navy SEAL who claims that he was the one who shot Osama bin Laden. Now, the interesting thing about this is that he was arrested of suspi on suspicion of driving under the, fluence, under the influence in Montana. However, he was not driving. He was found drunk behind the wheel. Uh, let's see. There we go. He was drunk behind the wheel of a, with the engine running outside of a convenience store in Butte, Montana. But he wasn't driving. However, in Montana, they can arrest a person if he's in the vehicle, even if it's not moving at the time. Now, this former Navy U.S. SEAL was not seen driving the car, and he refused to take the breathalyzer test. To me, that's significant. Apparently, he was hired by Fox News Channel and had profiled him in a television documentary titled, titled The Man Who Killed Osama Bin Laden. Now, the U.S. government has never officially confirmed who fired the one shot that killed bin Laden. Of course, both Stuart and I have told you many times that whole story is just off. But these kind of people are trained to not submit to th such things as a breathalyzer and drug tests because it could activate their programming. So the fact that he declined the test, I thought, was very telling. And who knows if we'll ever hear any more about this or not. But keep your eyes open just in case. 
Now, this is for you cat owners. It says that owning a cat can lead to severe mental illnesses. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that more than 60 million people in the U.S. have toxoplasmosis but may never show the symptoms. And apparently this is most prevalent if that you own an outdoor cat or if you had a cat as a child. It said, if you must handle the litter box, you must clean it daily because it does not become infectious until one to five days after it is shed in the feces. Be sure to wash your hands thoroughly. Consider wearing disposable uh, gloves. And of course, pregnant women have long been told to avoid cleaning their cat's litter box as toxoplasmosis has been shown to cause severe birth defects. So anyway, now they're linking it to schizophrenia. They said that uh, if you have... Um, dealt with cats in your earlier childhood, you're more prone to these problems, mental problems later in life, so beware. And this one was really interesting to me as well. This is about a singer who died after refusing treatment for a cobra bright bite during a performance. Now, I've never heard of this person, and I don't know if you have either, but she's an Indo Indonesian music star named Irma Buell. Apparently, snake handling has been part of her act for a long time, and whenever she has used poisonous snakes, the snakes are defanged. However, there was a king cobra who was not defanged, and she stepped on its tail, and it sank its fangs into her leg. Now, according to the article, the snake handler rushed to administer an anti-venom, but the singer refused it, continued her performance, collapsed, vomited, and was dead about 45 minutes later. So I'm really wondering if the anti-venom was offered to her or and if she really refused it. But that's a, an extremely triggering um, programming activation when you see these kind of snake handlers like this because it's very sexual in nature and obviously very reptilian. So anyway, I found that was interesting. So a lot of things are going to continue to happen. And then we have, of course, our word alien showing up as a fish this time when a bloated pink huge shark was caught off the coast of Los Cabos in Mexico. Now there was a biologist who saw this and claimed it was a swell shark and because the shark fills its stomach with water to enlarge its size so it prevents it from being swallowed by predators to deter them. But again, strange creatures, especially in the water, we've been seeing this lately. So, and then at the end it says, um, while alien fish may be free to roam the open seas for now, it's only a few more months until Shark Week makes this one-of-a-kind creature a once-again star. So Shark Week has been going on for the last two or three years, and a shark is a trigger for aggressive behavior. You even think about the show on television called Shark Tank. So lots of things going on out there about sharks, so be sure that uh, you will be seeing those in the news again. You must use that brown merger symbol and you really need to do your hyperspace oversoul work because the triggers are obviously increasing and becoming increasingly violent and you do not want to be caught up in that. Now this one I thought was interesting too about a man who survived nearly driving over a cliff on Malibu Canyon Road in California when he lost to control of his SUV headed toward a cliff and it was perched precariously over the edge. He managed to get out, but the moment he got out of his car, apparently a tour bus came around the corner, and that smacked him and knocked him down, and he was taken to a local hospital. It doesn't say if he lived or not, but he said he was being treated. But the point is, if your mind pattern is to be hit or something happened to you, it's going to happen. So you must do your work because, as I said, it's going to get increasingly bizarre. And as we head into further into 2016, 2016, remember a 2 plus 1 plus 6 is a 9. That's a completion year. So a lot of things are going to be going on this year you absolutely don't want to be in the middle of. Now this was also kind of interesting, speaking of hyperspace oversoul work. This is a can about cancer patients at a Detroit hospital. Now we did teach you a lot of mental work, Stuart and I, how to deal with disease, and of course we're not doctors and we do not say don't do this treatment or that treatment, but we teach you what we know so you can make your own choices. Anyway, the Henry Ford Innovation Institute is now creating replicas of cancer tumors for patients at this hospital, and then the survivors are invited to beat their cancer with hammers, baseball bats, and sledgehammers. So I thought it was kind of interesting. It is a mental type of exercise which makes you think, I can beat this. So it really, to me, it's actually an okay thing. So 
You can also do that mentally, but now they're actually making these replicas and allowing you to turn them into powder. So what kind of experiments they're performing, I can't tell you, but I do think it's a, it's at least on the, the correct track, in my opinion. And this also I thought was interesting. It shows that singing helps the body to fight cancer. Now, of course, as you know, I teach toning, and that's frequency. So and they're talking specifically about choir singing. So there was a study conducted by Tenovus Cancer Care and the Royal College of Music, and this was published in the journal eCancer Medical Science that found that singing in a choir, even for just an hour, boosted cancer patients' levels of immunity-related proteins, lowered stress, and improved participants' moods. So I thought that was very fascinating. And they also said, we have been building a body of evidence over the past six years to show that singing in a choir can have a range of social, emotional, and psychological benefits. And now we can see it has biological effects as well. And because of the preliminary study, they're now launching a two-year study exploring the mental, social, and biological benefits of choir singing as it relates to people coping with the repercussions of cancer, meaning patients and their loved ones as well. So it's kind of a positive note, so it's nice to be able to leave you on a bit of a positive note. But remember, the toning will help you because that makes changes the frequency in your entire cellular structure, as well affirmations. So there are a lot of things that you can do. You do not have to fall victim to any of this stuff that we're telling you about. But it's a good idea to be aware of what's out there because if you're not aware of what's out there, you can't change it, you can't fix it, you can't turn things around so it works for you rather than against you. So with that said, I want to remind you that our next self-healing group webinar begins here this week on Wednesday. So it depends on when you watch this if you're going to have the opportunity to join. The last one for this season will be in May and we'll take a break over summer and then we will start up again in September. Now in June I will be conducting in Northern Italy in the Codian Alps the, health, the Clear Health Healing and Spiritual Tour. That tour I will be closing soon because we have to rent our tour vans. And so once I rented them, then that's a done deal, and so the tour will be closed. So if you're interested, if you're coming, this is now where you have to put your money where your mouth is. I've heard for years and years how people want to go up into the Waldensian country with me and to, um, to explore it, to hike in those hills where the very, very high-level spiritual people walk, the descendants of the apostles and Jesus and Mary Magdalene. So if you're interested in this tour, you must contact Patricia as soon as possible, customer support at expansions.com. Stuart will be in Europe starting in May, so watch the website for details on that one. And of course, in September, we are instituting a new class, September Spectacular, which is a week-long class where we will be taking you out in nature. We will be exploring the shores of Lake Michigan. We will be going to nature preserves and forests. We have a lot of amazing um, activities for you where we will be teaching you practical hyperspace and oversoul work that you can employ and implement immediately. So the September Spectacular, we're both, both very excited about that and we're looking forward to engaging you in some things you haven't thought about before in ways you haven't thought about before because when you start mixing up your mind pattern then you start unsticking yourself where you are so that you can move forward and do what you want to do. So anyway next week Stuart will be joining me. I appreciate your time and attention. Please take care of yourself and remember to use that brown merger self-integration archetype at all times, keep yourself in heavy protection, and be very mindful of the programming triggers that are out there because you do not want to fall victim. They're setting you up and you're not going to take the fall. Thank you again for joining me. Janet Diane Moria Swordlow, Expansions.com. Bye-bye now.